Uh, hi, so uh, welcome to today's art presentation. Um, we do these from time to time and, and uh, more often what we're, what we're really trying to do is we're trying to go through a, a series of concept art pieces or illustrations or whatever we've got, reference art maybe. And, and often it's to discuss the considerations that went into the whole process. Uh, it, it seems like a lot of people think this is pretty interesting, so that's so what we do one today. Um, uh, on the couches with me here is uh, he who doesn't want to be named, I think. Like he just rather right. keep his anonymity. Um, but this is Jeremy, um, and uh, Jeremy has been doing a, a lot of, especially the environmental stuff and sort of this, I guess, set design for lack of a better word. Um, so if you've seen the recent uh, 3D panoramic images, uh, Jeremy's been doing those, um, and then also John Berquist, who I think you've seen plenty of times. But well, he's kind of a behind the camera I mean, guy. I mean, so, uh, so anyways, uh, John is, is our, our communications lord and master, and so he keeps track of all of the communications that he doesn't delegate out to someone else. So, uh, and there you're going on Chris, so I'm, I'm here too. And uh, today we're gonna look at environmental designs for uh, three locations that show up in this first episode. And you're gonna see Hilltop Camp, and you're gonna see Lily Grove, and I think Old Moss Creek. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. So, um, for context, this is an area that is uh, uh, west by southwest from Redwall Abbey. Um, there's a big river that's south of Redwall Abbey, who I don't think ever has a name. If there's a name, I'm not aware of it. The name is Mossflower. It's not Mossflower. It's not. It's not the River Moss. It's the Southern River, um, which, which, to my knowledge, doesn't have a name. But anyways, it comes uh, west and then banks sharply north. And so we're roughly in that area around that 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 crooky corner. So we're going to start with Hilltop Camp, I think. That's correct. Yep. Okay. So go ahead and, and uh, pop us in. Hilltop Camp is a uh, is meant to be an area where it's a semi permanent uh, camp settlement around Lily Groves, and so this is especially a scene where it's the opening scene of the game, and uh, and uh, the main character. Is uh, is being uh, kind of initiated. It's also it's also basically the tutorial level for the game, kind of get everyone set up. So, is there anything you wanted to start with, like, or like, did you want to say kind of what your vision was for the area, what kind of caught your eye? Um, on this concept, you can see there's a lot of vibrant colors, and I guess I just wanted to pull the player in and keep him playing. Because that's important. Yeah. Now, um, something something I didn't notice that you did here is uh, kind of Northern Lights Aurora Borealis. Mm -hmm. Do you imagine that to be a, a feature that we see a lot of once in a while? Is this just decoration? How are you? Um, <clears throat> more of a one-time thing. That's okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Then let's let's kick forward here. So so uh, tell us about this piece. Um, Hilltop Camp, um, the guy who lives here is, or he was, an astronomer, right? Okay. Um, these here are tools or instruments that he might have used when he did that sort of thing. Um, especially the bottom ones. Those are, I don't know what they're called, but they are basins filled with water and they are used to reflect the starlights from above and it's less straining on your neck. You can just look down at the pool rather than going like that. Right on. So. Where did I see those? I've seen those recently. Some movie. You know, it makes me think of actually, I, I realize this isn't the same, but Galadriel's Silver Bowl. Yeah, like, I've, it kind I've of makes me think of that. Too. There's Galadriel's Silver Bowl, but there's also, um, I think, Harry Potter in uh, Dumbledore's office <clears throat> study. There's something in the middle. That's true. Don't and they do memories? They like do you drop memories, memories, but there's there's some sky in there too. That's, That's possible. Yeah. Now those are kind of magical though. Like, does there is there a real world? Uh, like, did you invent this, or is it something you researched? No, I I didn't make it up, and it, it's not magical either. Yeah. Um, so it it fits perfectly <clears throat> in this world. Okay, something something that really caught my eye about this is one, it, it, the the observatory thing is is a cool idea. 
Um, but it also makes a really great stand for like coals, either for warmth or for, for light. Like, so it makes a neat fire pit, quite yeah. frankly. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought that the, the base especially really made me feel like it had a, a, an ancient Rome kind of influence. I'm not sure what it is about that. It's probably what looks to me like little curly cues on the, on the pillar at the top. It, it feels Roman to me. Mm -hmm. um, which at first I was like, oh, that doesn't fit, except then I realized the Roman influence in, in Britain is really strong. It's old, but it's really strong. And so maybe it fits great. Yeah, it might. Mm -hmm. um, and if this is especially uh, meant to be an old place, that could be a really neat feature. Okay. Can I click forward? Yes. Okay. Uh, lamp, lamp ideas. Mm -hmm. Talk about what you had in mind here. Yeah, so I was trying to come up with different ways to light a space rather than just fire and I may have I may have strayed too far um, but it, they are still cool ideas and maybe yeah. you could still keep them in mind yeah. Yeah. Um, like the, the red shards of glass illuminating that, that won't really fit in our world but maybe some other light source reflecting off of those it could be good for you I, uh, I remember, I think this is probably one of the earlier pieces where we, we had the magic conversation. Yeah. Um, and, uh, <clears throat> and magic doesn't happen in Red Wall. You, you have these vague moments of, of the vaguely supernatural, but not, yeah. not magic. I think, I, th I like where the Gavin put it, like, at least not any yieldable magic, right? Or right. controllable magic. Um, although you apparently have spirits and prophecies, and you do have some weird cases, um, like, uh, on on the, the ship in Lord Brocktree, they, they have these blue burning lanterns, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Which they never take <laughs> well, the time to explain. It but, it. Yeah. but I can imagine you have some chemical or something. Or, I mean, whatever. I can imagine that. But somewhere in here, you go from a strange colored fire to like glowing liquid, which who knows? Maybe. I mean, maybe you're just squeezing out fireflies. Phosphorus. Phosphorus. <laughs> wow. But it, it, you get pretty quickly, I think, into into magical, and we, we got to steer clear of that. And then your far right one, it looks to me like a fire pit, which I, which I think is always kind of stuck with me. I like that. Yeah, and I think if we do go into a realm that seems magical, we should maybe explain the reason why it's that way. Yeah, yeah I, I, I'd agree, and we, we need to be careful with that. Mm -hmm. But going back to the left, uh, the blue, we can have a different conversation about it, but I think that one feels believable in the sense like that could just be a candle in, inside the thing. And then you're talking about the styling. And I like the styling on that, which is the curves make it feel organic. You've got, uh, you've got decorative elements to it, um, where the middle one feels, to me, it, it almost goes steampunk somehow. And I'm not sure how I get there, but that's how it feels. And uh, someone mentioned the the red one, like belongs in the temple of the Sith. Like there's something sort of menacing about yeah. it. Mm -hmm. um, Even the middle one, there's a bit of like uh, wizardry or something. Yeah. Yeah, they all look like they could be steps or something. Yeah. Okay. What? You see, that thing turns off every once in a while. You know how? Like, does does it have to? Hey Lenny, like this stopped working. Do you like? Do you have to turn it on somehow, or refresh it, or something like that? Every once in a while, it just stops clicking. What'd you do? <laughs> Don't spoil it. All right. <clears throat> okay. Anyways, there you go. I knew I was here for some reason. Yeah. It probably wasn't selected because I changed the volume. Okay, it wasn't uh, the focus. It was okay, fault. That's, that's cool. Actually, I was hoping it was your fault, but it wasn't. I didn't. See? I get no we respect. We can trust you sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, tell us about this guy. Um, this is another astronomy tool that you might use. It's meant to align the sunbeams with the openings in that feature okay. on the right, and it lines up with the design on the ground, and it tells you what um, time of the year you're in. Okay. This is all like part of the kind of... That's the first thing I thought. It's like the, the Well of Souls and Indiana Jones. 
But it's, it, I can see how that would really work. Yeah, and it doesn't require any magic whatsoever. Yeah, for Aztecs. Work, so. But it almost feels magical just yeah. in the way it's pulled together. Yeah. Aztecs, Egyptians, they all did these kind of things. This is one the 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 technology or whatever is one thing, but the the pillar itself to me felt very uh, Art Nouveau um, or, or Frank Lloyd Wright, which I guess are kind of connected. And uh, and while I love that style. I, I probably nix this one because it doesn't look red wall to me. Right. Uh, but this is where I think these are some of the very early ones where we were trying to get on the same page. Mm -hmm. So I, I like where it, I like the concept of it. It's really cool. Okay. <clears throat> um, this is part of Hilltop Camp. We talked about pup tents. Mm -hmm. um, so you've got some small little like uh, you know Boy Scout tents here. Are these standing stones on the lower left? Yes. Or something else. Those okay. are unfinished concepts. Okay. That somehow made it in the slide. Okay. <laughs> um, some cooking fires, right? So these look pretty temporary and rustic. Mm -hmm. um, everyone's always making soup, so that, that's that's logical enough. Um, but then that's not the direction we want to go, right? True. Um, this fire set could be located near the smaller tents. Mm -hmm. um, it wouldn't be the main. Fireplace, at least. Okay. Or a campfire. Uh, right. Tell me what we got here. Um, this is a desk setup found within found within the main tent. Okay. Um, this was also an early piece. I'm not sure that this style again fits with the style we're going after. Okay. Um, but. There's a lot of smaller props that we could definitely still keep. One thing that we kept, we certainly, when we did the gatehouse, this started to create that sense of, of comfortable clutter, mm -hmm. right? Um, where, where you've got, you know, you've got stuff laid around and they're like, it, we really wanted to look lived in and loved. Yeah. Um, or even in the process of somebody doing some type of research. Yeah. Which is different than messy, right? And yeah. it's a fine line between messy and, and, and sort of used right yeah it's important to tell a story with the props as if somebody was actually using them and somebody lived there I think one of the things that happens really often in video games and there's both a technical and an artistic reason here is that there, there, there there's a lot of games that skew towards the, the grungy the dirty the like mostly broken there's you know bricks falling whatever else and I think that's really become almost a almost a cliche in a lot of video games um, and, and we, we decided we really don't want to do that like the idea to keep it tidy for the woodlanders at least um, and at the same time that, you, that, that it looks used is a different look and I, I, I want to get that right um, what do you think that comes from the modern video like the, the modern I guess it's like the post post modern yeah, and things so, are decaying and falling apart. Yeah, it's been a disaster. There's always something. Yeah, there's always the, the disaster, right? Something's gone wrong. It's an apocalypse, and it's the zombies or the zerg or whatever it is, which um, doesn't fit at all. Right. Yeah. And I think I think that has to be a, dis a a different element for us is that we have to lean into warmth and joy, <clears throat> uh, without it being cheesy. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes that's going to be that's going to be a trick. But, but that's that's I think where we're headed. Yep. And I think this desk did a great job of, of leading into that. This is a fire pit, I'm guessing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a concept for what the, the main campfire would look like. Um, this is also an early concept, and we have newer concepts. But I thought it would just be cool to see the process yeah. of yeah. it. This also, to me, has that kind of... Uh, Inset lines that it reminds me mostly of Frank Lloyd Wright, yeah. um, and uh, and yet I, I know that we didn't wind up going this way, but it is a really neat and distinctive style. I feel like we need it'd be nice to use it somewhere, mm. right? Because it's cool. Reminds me of a G Prime, <laughs> right? Something going on in the G world. Every time I see this with a with a little yeah. spit for the fire, I, I wind up asking myself, what are they roasting? Which is not an appropriate question. <laughs> <laughs> Who's being cooked? Rutabagas. Definitely rutabagas. Spearing rutabagas. Yeah. <laughs> Rot rotisserie bagas. <laughs> well, you could put a fish on a skewer. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, oh, yeah. Do that. Roasted fish. Big fat 
catfish yeah. on there. And compared to a mouse, how big would that be? I, I reckon it could be a big fish. It could be. Right. Matthias has to pull in that lunker. It's almost as big as he is. Right. Well, there's the giant fish in the moss flower. It's like a battle a pike. Yeah. yeah. A giant pike. Yeah. Uh, this is probably one of the earliest pictures of Hilltop Camp of the approach. And this is one of the things that I remember having a long conversation here. It came down to the question of scale, uh, which is, which we could have a whole art talk on scale, but we, you probably did six versions of this with different scaling yeah, things. Like that. Um, and you can finally see down that little purple thing, uh, down at the base of the tree, shows roughly the scale of the mice. So uh, I'll, I'll kind of summarize the, the ultimate concept here is, there's, there's a lot of talking about, about whether to make the characters big or small, but what we decided to do is make mice the size of children. So, so roughly a meter tall. Um, and then everything else kind of scales from there. But trees and rocks and hills, they're gonna be the same size as our real world. They should be recognizable. But in that world then, mice should sort of experience everything to be big, right? So they're sort of looking up at the world and where they go. Um, and, and then I think everything gets measured in mises from that point forward. So uh, you see that in, in the Abbeycraft world. And in fact, we even have a little part of the tutorial where it explains that. That's, uh, that's why everything's basically kind of twice as big as you think it should be. And, uh, and so yeah, that scaling was a big deal here, that I can really look up at trees and hills. And... So this was Hilltop though. It was one of the earliest versions of Hilltop. Okay. Uh, it was like it's almost too steep on top. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I had originally drawn the purple mouse, I don't know, two or three times that size. Yeah. And you it just... see the purple mouse. Oh, they can't? Okay. The camera's in the way. Oh, um, I see. Oh, the camera's in the way. Okay. Oops. <laughs> well, that's... Oh, there's a little purple mouse there. There's a little purple mouse that you can't see. Right here. Right here where we are. <laughs> okay, I'll keep going. Though. Yes, go ahead. And now we get into glamping. Mm -hmm. So, um, which is a, a hated term in some quarters that I'm told. Ultimately, go ahead. Well, we, this I remember the, when we first started this, I, was, I had a lot of input because uh, I was working with Saddleback. Right. And so the owners of Saddleback have a tent that they live in, in Texas. And it was inspired by safari tents. Which have become super cool. Really cool. Um, and then we've got we've got some semi permanent campground just up the road here at Tilico, and they've they've got those. They're I think they're canvas. Um, they they probably update the the roof every year, but I, I, most of them they're roughly permanent mm -hmm. um, without being built. So we wanted to make bigger structures that that frankly you could put a desk in, and you could have a stove. And so these are more like like hunting lodge kind of. Uh, Outfits. And they often have a, some type of surface. Sometimes they're carpets or dirt, but yeah, but they are meant to like have a. If they're not permanent, seasonally permanent. Yeah, and I really liked where this started to go. It, it, it made I thought I thought it made Hilltop Camp go back to cozy, and you start to see how you lit this with the lanterns in the tree. Um, in a, a small details, we decided against torches, basically open flames. Um, Aaron had pointed out how, I can't remember what book she was reading, but the basically the risk of, of forest fires, right? And that probably woodlanders would take that really seriously and be, they'd be super cautious. I, and that made a lot of sense. That's a great point. Um, so we went with enclosed lanterns as a as a standard and torches as a, as a no-go, except, uh, uh, except were really necessary. Which and I, I think is great. Vermin wouldn't be afraid of open flames. Yeah, what do they care? So, right? They can hold all the torches they want. <laughs> They're just torch wheeled and weenies. Right on. All right. And this is the same, or this was same. Aaron's version of the same thing? Uh, this is also mine. It's okay. just a different uh, mood option. Okay. Um, slightly less warm, or maybe more than slightly. Um, yeah, just another option to yeah. think about. Someone wants to know what the circle is on the top. The window? Mm -hmm. The window? It's a, yeah, okay, it's the window. Um, and uh, there probably wouldn't be glass in it, so you, there might be like a mosquito mesh. 
it lets air through. And also, if there is a, a fire of any kind, a stove or something, it's one place that air could get in and out, uh, sort of above your, your breathing room. This, this actually begs another question that, that you'll see in a lot of, you're going to see in Lily Grove too. We, we've decided one thing about the size of structures is that woodlanders in general expect to entertain other woodlanders. And so the result of that is that even if it's a mouse-built structure, they're expecting to have otter and hare and even badger visitors. And so basically their buildings are bigger than they would be if it was just for them. And that happens all over the place. So there might be a, an unusual case where, where you know, there's some hermit mouse and he doesn't want visitors. And so he has a mouse-sized house. But by and large, that's not going to be normal. They're, they're expecting this variety of company um, and so, and so again, mice's mice's will always see everything as bigger than it needs to be. Okay, so some uh, foliage, trees, bushes, flowers. Are these from nature? Or are these totally out of your mind? Are you out of Did your you skull? Out of I asked. I was polite about it. <laughs> um, I believe these are all from out of my mind. But that doesn't mean that there weren't images and real life references that I used beforehand. Right on. Um, if I didn't use references, these wouldn't be here. Okay. Um, you know, they'd just be like the equivalent of a stick man, but in tree form. Stick. Uh, yeah. There's something I, I really like about Jeremy's concepts for the environment is they tend to be really wild. Organic. It's just like growing. Yeah, awesome. like it's all the suckers and the. The, the offshoots and the stuff growing on the trunks, like it's not clean, and I mean that as a compliment, but I love that about it. And, and uh, you'll see a lot of undergrowth, bushes, and grasses, and it really fills in the spaces, I think. So, like this tree in the center, not the one that's more bare than the other one, I literally found crazy that looks like, like someone who's an arborist would, you know, twitch, but it looks great, I think, in, in the game. Very cool. Okay, go. Tr what, do, what do you got here? Like the same tree in yes, different seasons. A lot of a lot of the same tree. Um, the the idea here was to well, we were trying to figure out what trees would look like in our game. Right. Right. So both Aaron and I came up with different styles for tree. So they're all the same except the trunk texture is different. Okay. Um, and none of these were chosen, but this is the process that yeah. we went through. Yeah. Um, and who knows, maybe one of these will come up later. And well, and I don't know that we ever built this tree. There's the juniper that we built. But so in other words, these, could, these are still in play. They yeah, they could. Projected. Yeah, it wasn't so much the type of tree, it was the style of art yeah. for, for portraying the tree. Which. We, I think we talked about it in a previous stream, but the the overarching goal that we're working for right now is what we're calling reality plus plus. And so it needs to look, and so the, the function of that will be from a distance, it should look fairly real. But as you get close in, it should look increasingly artistic and impressionistic. Mm -hmm. So that shows up in, the, in how the textures are built, basically level of detail uh, technology through speed trees. So I like, I like the trees. Okay, walk us through what we got here. Um, these are some more hilltop camp designs and concepts. Um, these are... I don't know that we used any of these. These are again more iterations that that we had talked through and... Yeah. Um, yeah. I thought especially 1.6 over here. Uh -huh. It's really, it's really neat, but it almost looks alien mm -hmm. um, in, in kind of the curves of it. And 1.8. Elvin. Elvin, yeah. Elvin. Elvin. Yeah. yeah. Um, where in 1.8 is back to your Frank Lloyd Wright, right? So yeah. the, the dentals and stuff. Um, really cool. I like. I want to use it somewhere. Just I don't know how to put it here. What did you think of 1.7? Like, I don't think you had a chance to see these. I like it. I mean, it reminds me of I've seen those before. The curtains being drawn. Is that the curtains drawn back? Um, like a... It's actually not. It's a bunch of. It's a bundle of 
sticks and sticks thin okay. logs. So it's, it's, it's more, you know, from trees and such. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, huh? It definitely looks like a curtain being drawn back. Yeah, I could, I, it certainly would work that way. That's, it's a neat image. It almost makes you think like the canvas, the tent, but just a, one that you can open up with open air. What's it called? That's good. Well, I hadn't thought about it as mm-hmm. curtains. Mm-hmm. I like, one of the things I like about it is the central, almost like a big round picnic bench in the middle. Mm-hmm. And whether or not you have a pillar in the center or just open, it that feels like a cool space, right? To kind of eat around a mm-hmm. round table kind of thing. That's cool. Yeah. So this is the gate, I think, into yeah. Hilltop Camp, right? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. So Hilltop, the, the camp is is on at least three sides, um, and maybe four. It is is kind of bound by uh, you know brambles and blackberry bushes. Um, there's hill, there's steep hills, but there is actually an entrance uh, that that you get into. Um, and so these are some concepts for that. I don't know that we want to. Did we want it using any of these, or did you have? I don't think we've chosen one yet. Okay. So it's undecided. Three so points feel like it's like on the streets of London, like a gate going someplace. Right? I remember looking at that thinking that the uh, getting the two trees to grow together like that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I like that. Probably by scale it's a little too small, but I, the concept is cool. Or maybe the mouse is too big is what's going on there. Yeah. Right, this was the one I remembered. I think, I think in my mind, this is the one that, that we, the public means me, selected as my favorite. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, this is the final iteration as of yet. Okay. It takes ideas that you were fond of, and I joined them together and came up with this. Right on. So. I love the flagstones. I love the kind of like just taking what would have been a natural portal anyway between the train and the rocks. And then turning it into, you know, a, a, a made one. I think that's that's neat. That's a neat picture. Now, do you see that as solid or more as bars? Like, are those wood planks? Or are they bars? I drew them as wood planks. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's cool. And then the support is made of metal, and they attach to rocks. Okay. Very nice. Uh, okay, another approach. Mm-hmm. So there's a, basically there is the, the camp down below with the, you know, the, the tents and the campfire. And then there's this higher area, which is the uh, observatory, I guess is what we're calling it. So you have to get up there. So I, I like where that's going. Is that roots, like it's coming out of the root? Yeah, you need Water to climb. around this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you need to climb the roots to access the top. Big old roots are always. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's neat. These are tent concepts, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, I remember, and I remember this conversation. I remember thinking the uh, the one over the top one to me looked it looked Arab to me. Like I, maybe that's the wrong word, but but basically I I, I could see that on the Sahara, um, or or maybe kind of old Bedouin or something, right? And and it's probably the the dingleberries that made me think that mm-hmm. the top. Yeah, um, yeah and, and then you've got this wild kind of cone shape that's really dramatic, like doomed or something. It's meant for wind. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe that's, I never even thought about that. That makes a lot of sense, really. Because you get a prevailing wind from one side all the time. It wouldn't work if it came from the other side. You set this up backwards. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then this other one made me feel like a, like a yurt, like the Mongols or something. Yeah, like, uh, It's funny how uh, I think we you'll, we'll have these conversations ongoing with costumes, with props, and everything else. Is are there the are there some subtle cues that bring you to a certain culture? That happens all the time, and I think often on accident. And we have to keep saying something about that's not doesn't fit in a red wall, right? We were looking at costumes today that skewed Asian, or they or they look whatever they look African, or it, 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 and it's sometimes you don't even realize what it is that points you in that direction. Like um, the, the nomadic one in the middle there, it's like the cone. It has yeah. influences maybe of Russia, or who knows. But it does bring you to that Asian, yeah. like far, uh, far west 
Russia and Mongolia idea, but yeah, the top one, it's probably, like, I've seen those where they just throw the cart, or they throw a fabric on fabric on fabric on a chest. Yeah. It almost looks messy, but that's... But they can be really, really pretty, too. Mm -hmm. And that can really work for you as long as it's bringing you to the right place. Right, it, so it's just something you have to be conscious of. I didn't, I didn't mean to go Asia. I didn't mean to go Russian. Um, as long as you do it deliberately, I think it works really well. Nice. Okay. Tell me what you got here. This would be where the game begins. Um, it's the choosing area for which character you'd like to be. Um, so, so it's like a little waiting area, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That's that's what this this scene is all about. It's just waiting area. You choose the character you'd like to play as. Right on. And then the path up to Hilltop Camp over here in the, in the back, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love this image because of the, the lighting contrast. Um, it, it, you know, I think that we're gonna have to be aware of balancing. The cool night, you know, the snow, all that's going to be really cool. With like this, these warm places, like, I think it's a it's a really neat place to create some striking images. Yeah, and I think that's where we need to stray from real life because most of the time it's not it's not really blue at night. And, right. And I think that's a choice that we need to make, and we need to add that color. Agreed. Yeah, that's that's neat looking. This okay, is so a go keep going. Uh, top down view of Hilltop Camp. Um, it's the most recent iteration, and it's probably the one we're going to go with, but okay. can never be too certain on that. I think in this case, with North Bay on the right, Orient, Lily Grove is off the platform, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and then in this case, you have. Dark is low, the brighter is the higher. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And is the, the white spots are lanterns, maybe? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I like how that's how that's laid out. The kind of the different elevations look really slick. Yeah. Makes for a more exciting gameplay if it's not just a completely flat ground. Yeah. Very cool. Okay. All right, this is a brand new image that I really like. <coughs> So this, this is starting to look at, you know, we, we talked earlier about wanting to use lanterns and especially as a, as a spot, as, as spots of color and warmth throughout. Um, they'll draw your eye, they'll hopefully draw the character. Um, and so you just did a whole bunch of different ideas, even from like, almost like a Christmas tree kind of concept. Um, just tell me what was on your mind, because I love this image, I think it's really cool. Okay. Well, I think, um, I think I'm gonna let's see. Work here. Well, in one of the previous um, concepts, we had trees with lanterns in them, and I thought, why not just throw it on a fir tree? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I have enough probably to do it. Okay. Go ahead. Um, yeah. I thought, why not just throw it on a fir tree style? Yeah. And it looks a lot like a Christmas tree now. It does. Um, <laughs> It's, it's cool though, I mean, I could even imagine this in the summertime or someplace, I like that idea. I do too. Dude, did, uh, I, was rem I remember in some of the, you had that, that big glamping tent, mm -hmm. you had some round ones, which which I thought were cool, almost like paper lanterns. Mm -hmm. Those could be neat too. That's true. But uh, anyways, the, it's, the, it's the light and dark that I really like. It makes me think of like, how are the mice lighting these things? Are they using a long pole? Are they climbing up and doing it, right. you know, it's kind of it's an uh, interesting idea of like how they would, the mechanics behind getting them lit or hanging them. Something that, that has always stuck with me is, is probably some old version of Scrooge, I think, was a, was a, it was kind of a gaslight setting in England, and the guy was going around the city in stilts, and he would light the lamps by hand, but he was on stilts to get up there, huh. and it was a really cool, and I, I, I believe that's historically that's accurate, cool. but it was a really neat picture. Yeah, it was cool. Well, they gotta get up there somehow. They gotta get right. <laughs> Hire some robins to do. <laughs> well, that's it. I like that idea too. Maybe their fireflies are just that fiery. Yeah. Maybe they're trained. Yeah. <laughs> get in the winter. Actually, are there any fireflies in England, or is that just an American thing? I don't know where they live. 
mostly, well, they are actually all over the U.S. Yeah, they've been killed off. But are they in Europe? I don't know. I don't know. Good question. Question for the audience. Question. <laughs> Some <Someone> Google <laughs> that thing. All right, go ahead. And by the way, I want to keep track of the time. Where are we? You even know? It's one thirty. Okay, we're probably gonna have time for Lily Grove, but probably not there. Eight. Street. It's almost one forty. Yes, thank you for that math wizard. Okay, <laughs> Lily Grove is the is the sort of the town that the main character uh, comes from. Um, we had the same town in uh, in the Corsair's Last Treasure, and you've probably seen quite a bit of Lily Grove uh, concept art go up on the Facebook page recently. So you're gonna some of this you, you might have already seen. Um, and we've tinkered with a lot of ideas here. Um, for one thing to note is that, based on the books, like settlements are pretty uncommon, and so and so we had a lot of conversations about how urban could something like this get. You know, how rural. Um, we had some scale conversations. Go ahead, and, uh, go to the next oh, slide. Yeah. It's this image, I think. Um, we had lots of conversations about how big were their houses. Um, and 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 the scale conversation about making mice as big as children, it in, it made certain ideas impossible. Like uh, we had several people suggest basically kind of fairy houses, which would be you know literally mouse size, right, a couple inches tall, all that kind of thing, um, living in little holes in the you know woodpecker holes. But you can't do that if the mice are three feet tall, um, unless you have like gigantic trees, and we don't want that either. So the middle ground is is basically. Uh, you know, some, something that we that we discussed were roughly human-sized, low on the human-sized buildings, um, but they could certainly be built into the side of a hill, almost like a hobbit hole kind of thing. But also, they could be freestanding structures. Um, obviously, red wall was constructed, and it's a you know big big thing. So they're capable of building large structures. Uh, they've got the technology and the and the, and the tools to do it. So that's in play. Um, but as woodlanders, we want to make sure that they're also really close to the earth, right? Um, so this was, I think, a really telling image. I, I love having this house sort of set into a hill, but it still shows uh, it still shows their own engineering, their own work. And we had a long discussion about the round doors, um, and uh, I think the round doors are are they skew too much into into the Hobbit thing. Like those have become a distinctive of of Hobbits, and and it, it wouldn't be horrible to be associated with Hobbits, but it's that same thing. You got to make sure you're doing it intentionally and appropriately and if we get mistaken for hobbits that's too far right so we don't want that and so the the middle ground that we wound up doing on the doors uh, for mice in particular is basically to make the doors mouse hole shape right so they're like round it. at the top but square on the sides right. I'm pretty sure that was Gavin's idea is a really good compromise and we can have our cake and eat it too um, has anyone ever seen a real mouse hole in a, like in a in the bottom of a wall no, I never had actually. Always maybe so. Maybe it's just Tom and Jerry mouse hole. I didn't maybe so. <laughs> That's a good model. That's real or not? Mouse in the motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so I think in Lily Grove you're going to see houses that are freestanding as well as ones that really incorporate into the into the geography. Um, okay, yeah. Go ahead. Go talk through what you got here. Um, bottom left. Um, for the most part, the house is not built into the hill, but I thought it would be important to have some of it, so you can see a small door possibly, unless it's covered up by our faces. Could be. Oh, I don't know. I think it is. Um, but yeah, it, it kind of establishes them as animals as well as domesticated, I guess. Right on. And then upper right, I think we we said that probably was a better match for Silver Sands. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so so we wound up sort of pulling this out of the Lily Grove concept art and moving it into Silver Sands. Um, and then the one right below it, we wound up thinking it's attractive, but it looks awfully fantasy. It looks almost World of Warcraft or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, a little bit too unrealistic in that regard, you know. A, a tower structure that could never support itself, that kind of stuff. So, so we skewed away from it being too fantasy, um, and uh, we'll wind up somewhere closer to the middle. 
when we got here. Um, These are a bunch of church thumbnails. Right, okay. That can be placed in Lily Grove. Right on. Um, and then the second, second section of images was for um, possible general store concept. Oh, that's right, okay. And so, again, I, I think this is the place where it was either one or two on the general store that felt like um, the best opportunity to use the kind of built into a hill thing. So if, these, if this is a place of, especially um, storage, so if you, it's, it could be a general store, but also where people uh, have roots or, or kind of basic supplies for the winter, they could have an underground cellar that kept all that cold mm -hmm. in the cellar. Mm -hmm. So I, I really like that idea. Um, and I think the other ones were great too, but we want to, I think, going with the, with the hillside one. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think on the, basically the, the church temple counseling session or whatever, I want to say top row, fourth column was sort of where we broke off from. Um, and I, I don't know if you have any of that development in this. I deck. believe we do. Okay. Yeah. Top row, fifth one over. I think so. It's the one. Yeah. Uh, cool, cool. I like a lot of these buildings. They uh, they do they feel very European and, and kind of old to me. Whether that's I don't know Adobe or something, um, they may look a little Spanish. Yeah, I mean, any yeah, of the structures where it's like a, it's mixed mud, and straw, and those kind of things. So there's anything let's say Spanish, maybe I don't know. It makes me, I, I want to think about Don Quixote, yeah. um, which makes me want a windmill in the early room, honestly. Um, it, it'd be a neat feature. Um, but I, I just love the big open space here. Um, so Lily Grove is, is out of the woods. But, or I, actually, we even decided how much tree cover we're going to have around there. Maybe, maybe we've gone back and forth. Mm -hmm. dryer, which, which blends well with the stuck out of the mud side. Dryer and run. Do you have those buildings with the fast roofs? Is that in here? I'm not sure. Okay, we'll get there. Or not. I'm actually a fan of this one over here. Uh, let me see. This one here. Because yeah, it, like um, it has Celtic influence in the, um, in the style of material as well as the building shape. Okay, um, what's Celtic about it? Well... The roof, for example, goes very low at the edges. Right on. It almost reaches the ground. It's made of straw, um, uh, partly at least. Um, and I noticed that some of the some of the houses they have these triangular triangular shaped doors. Oh really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was kind of cool. That, that is crazy. cool. I don't think I've seen that. And it looks like you got the little horns almost on the corner, mm -hmm. which makes. Yeah. My gosh. That's cool. Yeah. Okay, that's a that's a neat looking structure. I, I agree. I like that building. Maybe we if we uh, set apart on a on a town hall. I don't know if we nailed one of those down or not. Yeah, that'd be a great candidate for that. Yeah. Okay, so this is more we're getting into into buildings that might be in the center of town, right? So you might have a couple a, a larger structure that could house maybe maybe a couple businesses or, or meeting areas or whatever else. Um, and I think by the uh, up here at number four, you're starting to show kind of a Tudor uh, influence. I, I think that's what that's called. I, I could be using the word wrong, but you're in medieval England, right? So yeah. it's the plaster and wood. Right. The colors at the top. Yeah. Is that the Windows logo? <laughs> yes. Almost. <laughs> And here, down in eight, you're back to the to the round, yurty looking thing. Mm -hmm. But that one doesn't make me go to Mongolia for some reason. Like there's something different about it that I don't go there. And I'm not sure what it is. Maybe sure. it's missing that horn on the top. Maybe it's mm -hmm. I, maybe that's the deal. You know, I, I like the picture. And then one, you've got these this weird kind of flying. They have a longhouse. Yeah, it's it's a really different profile. It's really interesting. Almost like a covered wagon. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> the Oregon City, the giant. Yeah. Covered wagon. With wings. 
<laughs> That's covered where I grew up. We had this house where I grew up um, that was this four pointed thing. And so on the four corners, the, the roof pointed way up. And so you had these kind of weird big corner windows. And at the end of the, whatever's not the corner, in between corners, the roof would come all the way down to the center. Um, and then in the very middle of it was this peak. And that was like this kind of stucco shaped roof. And we all called it the Flying Dirty Diaper. It was like that was the name of the house. And we would all climb on the roof because you could get there. And it, it was a strange architectural oddity in the middle of this little sleepy town. Yeah. Um, I, I wonder if it's still there because it was yeah. such an unusual house. I'd like to see that. Yeah. It was, it was I think Jason Budak lived in it for a while. <laughs> Anyways, uh, it, okay. Right, okay, so this is, I love this building. Um, so this would be maybe the, the town church. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got we've got a, a, a graveyard out in front, which I learned is a, was a common thing. Is you would you put the graveyard out front so that basically you had to walk through it right. on your way in, kind of to contemplate your own mortality, I guess. Um, but it's a neat, dramatic piece. Um, it's not, and we don't need to make we're not trying to make it spooky, right? It's, it's not right. it's not that kind of thing. It looks, it's definitely looks like some English countryside. Yeah, I, I love this, and I love these big, huge spruces on the side. I think those are they, they, from a from an eyeball perspective. You want it with these three peaks that look really cool. This one probably needs a little bit of light in it. Um, you know, streaming out the front door, or whatever. That'd be a great piece. Oh, yeah. But I love that image. So th- I think I think this one is probably a finalized one that we definitely want in the game. Mm-hmm. Um, Really like that. This one, I I love the, maybe that slate roof. I'm not sure what you meant what those are, but I get the sense that they're tiles of some kind. Mm-hmm. Yep. Which I don't think we have anywhere else, but I sure like it. Reminds me of Ron's house. Ron <laughs> Harry Potter. Oh. <laughs> Can't yeah, I guess it does. It. Yeah. Just crazy, you know, like angles and yeah. Different patched on work. <laughs> yeah. The other thing I like about this is that is the little cellar down at like you see kind of going yeah. down. Yeah. So this could be an inn or something like yeah, that that'd be a neat house. Yeah. I don't know if this will wind up in Lily Grove, but it should wind up somewhere because I think it's a cool, a really cool structure. <laughs> Alright, old Moss Creek. I think we're probably running on 40, 45 minutes. And so let's let's hold this off. What, what, what? Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna cut this off here, and we can always come back, and we'll probably do more. Um, but we wanted to do some some uh, some work just to kind of show you what what we're working on. Um, of course, this is concept art, and so uh, you know it it may or may not ever wind up in the game, and it may or may not be be iterated on. Um, but we've had we've had a lot of fun, and and Jeremy has just brought so much energy and style. So I think the way that we're portraying the environments, I really love the work that he's doing. And it sounds like so to you. So uh, the comments we get on his work are consistently really strong. Um, so congratulations on that. I guess you can stay another week. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, so his, his name is Frank uh, yes. Dweezelwerb. Yeah, we've had so people look him up on the ask phone. if they can hire him. Like, no. Like, back off, man. <laughs> Coaching our people. Um, so anyways, that's, that's uh, is this your first job doing this mm-hmm. so like yeah I think that we met Jeremy when he was still like 12 or something at CGDC and, not uh, quite not quite 12 close enough <laughs> so uh, really just kind of picked him up off the street but he's turned out to be kind of a keeper um, and uh, so that's been fun and but I think so you had a you had a really strong influence on the, the artistic design and I think that you were like immediately jumping in there so obviously you got a lot of talent uh, good work I mean horrible talent Probably not worth a dime, but we'll, <laughs> we'll suck it up. Um, anyways, um, are there any last minute questions, Emily? Or everyone wants to know what you're hiding in Old Moss Creek. What are we hiding? Well, you'll have to find out. It's not that we're hiding; we're out of time, um, and we'll get back to it. So I'm sure we'll do more of these. These are fun. Um, Is Willow Grove an undefended town, or do they have some sort of defended? Yeah, we thought about that a lot, actually. Um, in fact, it really drives the conversation. Okay. Repeat the question. So oh, because she can't hear it. Um, the question is whether or not Lily Grove is a defended town, or if it's kind of just out there in the wilderness. And in the short, it's it's undefended. We thought about whether or not it should have a wall. We, we really thought about it, yeah. and, and we wanted Redwall. We, we several things went into this. We wanted Redwall to be relatively unique in that regard. Like Redwall is sort of the castle of the area, so to speak, um, and that does leave these folks vulnerable. But that plays into the story. 
Um, but it also drives the the architecture. Like when you have a walled city, kind of everything tends to be inside the wall, and you want to put a much more urban setting. And the closer we got to urban, the less it felt red wall, and it felt like something else. Um, you know, it, it, we wanted more woods. We wanted more open space. So that makes it vulnerable. Okay. Anything else? Uh, is the game going to be released in chapters? Uh, in chapters, yes, but I don't think Telltale Games is the right way to imagine it. Um, that doesn't like that doesn't sound like the right metaphor. So, so you shouldn't be thinking about about Telltale as as a model, but we we are going to have these in steps. So uh, right now, uh, right now we're we're looking at three prequel chapters, and then we're going to see what happens next. But at least three that introduce the three main characters, kind of one at a time. Um, the first one is a mouse, the second one is a mole, and the third one is a squirrel. So that's kind of building up till we get to whatever we happens on chapter four. But we're still discussing this. So uh, soon we're going to have another video where we probably lay some more uh, stakes in the sand. But that'll get you ready in the right direction. Um, have you looked at design thinking house design as well? Uh, yeah, I mean, yes, so the question is, have we looked at building designs from Elder Scrolls and Oblivion, and some of those stuff are really good. In fact, uh, the Skyrim buildings, I think, uh, in particular, were, were, were suited uh, well. Um, but at the same time, we need to find our own space. So they've been inspirational, they've been great reference stuff, but uh, we want a different look, um, and so, so they haven't been specific to that. Um, so in regards to chapters, are you going to be able to buy it all at once, or like the chapters? Are uh, so the question is, regarding the chapters, we'll be able to buy them all at once or one at a time, and the answer is both. Um, you'll certainly be able to purchase the individual chapters as they're released, and then we'll make sure we do some kind of a package at the end to, to probably give some kind of a discount at the end. But then you got to wait. Uh, how long in terms of playtime do you expect chapter one to be? So the question is, how long... Uh, is chapter one in terms of playtime, and I'm going to punt on that question. And the, the reason why is, one, I don't think there's any answer that makes sense. Uh, like a lot of adventure games, it has everything to do with how you play it. Are you the person or who's going to... Or who? Like me. I'm, it takes me forever to do anything. John's the guy who like runs into the corner and can't figure out how to get out of it. <laughs> or I just start to explore. So the truth is, I don't think it's a meaningful question um, <laughs> or an answerable question, although I know it's a common one. And so we're just going to demure and say, as long as it takes. <laughs> Anything else? Okay. So thank you very much for coming. We'll keep doing more of these. Um, and uh, Jeremy, thank you so much. I did want to say we're starting to uh, build our audience over on Instagram. And we've been purposely sharing a lot of Jeremy's work over there just because it's it's Instagram. It's beautiful pictures yeah. and those kind of things. So. If you want to see some things that we're not sharing anywhere else, uh, we'll be sharing those soon on Instagram. Not yeah. Facebook or anything else. And this gets saved, right? So you don't have to see this live to see it. Yeah. They can see it later. Yeah. Okay, great. Stuff. So uh, so this is uh, 2 o'clock on our Thursday, and just about. And uh, thank you very much for coming. We'll see you next time. <laughs>